No two cultures are more intertwined than that of tattoos and motorcycles. incredible day in New Orleans, we're heading north to Meridian, Mississippi, where Spacey has invited us to check out his shop, TNT Tattoo. Meridian, Mississippi isn't a very affluent community, so I didn't know what I was walking into at his shop, actually, but when we pull up, there's a bright yellow building, draws your eye from a mile away. That was an awesome ride today. Much better, much better. It didn't seem like it took that long at all either, really. I'm starting to think that there's nowhere in America that has nice roads. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you can't miss this building. No, man. Let's go inside, get out of this heat. Yeah. It is hot. hot. I meet Spacey in New Orleans. He's going to be the artist giving me my first tattoo on the trip. If you know Spacey, now I know Spacey. He's a six foot five Indian, California stoner surfer, or that's how he sounds, or I, I, he's his own person. What's going on, guys? What's up? Oh, hey, fellas, y'all made it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you made it. You made it. <laughs> good to see you, man. Hey, you too, man. It's good to see you. Oh, you ready to do some tattoos? Hell huh? yeah, man. Right. I'm ready. This is TNT Tattoo. This is my second shop I've had in Mississippi, and I opened it right after Hurricane Katrina. Really wanted to invest in young people, mentor them, and make some sort of tattoo industry. So, and it's worked out. Well, let's show us around your okay. shop, man. All right, uh, I like to tattoo in my own room, so come on back this All way. Right. This is my area. Oh, check you out. furniture in there was kick-ass, it was clean, it was professional looking. Basie's work area was the best work area I've ever seen. It was very big, very large. It impressed me, it really did. He tells me he's got a design that he drew up, but I can't see it, it's a surprise. And sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches and see what happens. All right, so let's see this tattoo, man. Are you sure? I'm sure, yeah. Okay, it's you, man. Fucking <laughs> 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 right, dude. Let me see that, dude. It's got meaning too behind it. It really is you, man. Yeah, tell them the meaning. Yeah. Because you told it to me, it was awesome. Basically, stay around your hometown, never really got out there and stretch legs on the interstate. Yeah. Which is the greatest thing you can do on your motorcycle. Since the time I was a little kid, I've wanted to be a tattoo artist and be in the tattoo industry. Have tattoos, do tattoos. I used to get tattoo magazines or biker magazines. I'd find the cool looking art in them and I would recreate it. Just make my own tattoo flash and that's kind of where it started. Big Dave did not want to hire me at all because uh, at the time my art was terrible. I'm not apprenticing him his portfolio sh that's one of the reasons I was so amped up to hire him. It wasn't because I loved his artwork so much, but I really needed the free labor. You know, you're almost looked at like a celebrity. You walk around town and people are like, oh, that guy's a tattoo artist. When I rode a motorcycle for the first time, I don't think I've ever felt cooler in my life. You ask a little kid, like, what noise does a cow make? And they say moo. Well, when I was a kid, it was what sound does a Harley make? Bikers have always had tattoos, you know? They just go together. And I guess that's kind of what it is for me. We all see the bike as a way of freedom to us all, right. and freeing spirit, so that's what the wings are. You know, the traditional wheel and wings is a freedom, and you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got the lightning bolt in each hand, you're oh, yeah, ready to attack the world. You know? <laughs> that's awesome, dude. And your little wee-wee's there, so. <laughs> that's awesome. It's bigger on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. I wanted to put this in a place where you can see it. Because, yeah. you know, this is this is something you're going to carry with the rest of your life. You always remember this. and I know. Every time I'm riding, man, I just look over. He's right there. And you'll see your little wee-wee looking yeah. right back at yeah. you. Yeah. Spot on. That looks just like his. 
I mean, that dude has spent time researching Robbie and just put together a tattoo that when I seen it and he told me the story, I'm like, I love it, man. Listen to Spacey talk later on, getting to know him, it means a lot to him to be able to do something like that. You know, life's all about the stories. That's what Dave tells me. It's one of my favorite tattoos and uh, one of my most painful tattoos. Red Dog, you think this is gonna suck? It is gonna suck. Really? Yeah. The inside's very, very sensitive. Very I mean, I've got my neck, my hands. Right. It's not gonna be as worse as your neck. In New Orleans, we learned along our guided trip through the French Quarter by Spacey that he's a great storyteller and his ability to remember facts is incredible. But he is a little long-winded. When I first got tattooing, you know, professionally in Jackie's place, that's where, you know, the big, great artists were at. I knew I wanted to be there and I needed to be there. So, man, I, I did whatever I could. But um, Jackie kept letting me come around and I worked my way up. Tribal was getting popular and a lot of people couldn't do the tribal. Back then it was like fours and six flats, remember that? Right, yeah. So I was like, what can I do to make this job easier, you know? So I started making my own monster mags, you know? And you couldn't buy them anywhere. There was no tubes for them that I knew of. So I'd hack up my tubes and I made me, you know, tube tips. And uh, next thing you know, I was a tribal king, you know? <laughs> it just because I become a tattoo master does not mean she's never not going to be my master. She's always going to be my master. And um, I'm forever grateful. And I like to tell people about it. Like New Orleans seems to be your home, but yeah. obviously you live here in Mississippi and how'd you end up here or did you start here? What's that whole story all about? I've heard about this place from the time again growing up because uh, my parents were preachers in the Salvation Army and uh, in each city they have their own core. We were tied in with Mississippi and Alabama, so we'd have like a camp every year or, right. or a youth programs and we'd all travel to a central location and so I knew some girls that live here and, you know, <laughs> and so, there is uh yeah I wasn't attracted to them but they were really nice so, oh, but, so you're really lonely in New Orleans <laughs> I was really lonely <laughs> what happened was uh I've always been an artist I wasn't a tattoo artist at the time I, I did I was a graffiti guy you know and I did flyers for people punk rock flat shows and all that Anyway, a friend of mine moved up here because he was dating one of them chicks I was talking about. I sent him in my artwork and the guy that was there uh, pretty much said, come on down, uh, we'll, we'll find a place for you, so. How's that feeling, Bert? It's uh, neat. Neat? Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how neat is it? Uh, in comparison to some of my other tattoos, it's not bad at all. So how did you become a writer for the Horse Magazine? I went to the bookstore and, and was looking at modern motorcycle magazines and uh, I saw an uh, issue of the horse magazine. They used to be called the Iron Horse, remember that one? Yeah, you all yeah, know that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I would scour every one of those pages. I'd get a magnifying glass out if I had to and like, I could do that, maybe, you know? Being a writer, I had to have someone take photographs for me because I'm not a photographer and I'm not going to ever be one. Of course, Crystal and I, we just started dating and we just worked together off the bat. So with their wonderful uh, photography and my writing skills, I mean, we just kept honing them, man, you know? And when I write stories, I write them like I'm talking to you. And I, you know, I put the bad grammar in there with it. And there's a method to that madness. You know, if you read my articles, you'll right, see. Yeah. Why do you love tattooing? I mean, what is so special about tattooing for you? I, I really, you know, daydreamed a lot. You know, I drew pictures and stuff to make my dreams realize. The nickname Spacey comes from staring out the window. Right. You know, I'm a daydreamer and I'm always thinking about making things or doing things. I mean, I love music. The guitar has been my lifelong love and performing. That's what got me out of the house. That's what got me to run away to New Orleans. We're like, man, we're broke. We got to stay on the road. We need money for musical instruments. How can we do that? What can I do with the greatest talent that I have with the least effort and the least amount of time to make the greatest amount of money? All right. But that's how I got into tattooing was because of music. And all of a sudden, man, we got gas to go to shows. We're buying a Marshall amp, you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, we lived off of tattoos, man. I found myself losing myself in this like I would performing, you know? Right. I really could not wait to do tattoos. That's how I am the man they call Spacey. So uh, when we're done here, man, care if we go check out your shop? 
Yeah, I was hoping y'all want to go check out some motorcycles, man. Yeah. yeah. So how's it going, Bart? <laughs> you ready for it to be done? Yep. We're about done. Okay, man. You set really well, and I'm about to leave you alone. But I got to do one more thing that will set this off for you. Okay. okay. Put a little blue right there in your balls. <laughs> I was a little nervous going into it, and I was a little nervous about the healing process, but everything went good, man. It turned out to be a great tattoo. He probably lost sleep thinking about this tattoo. I mean, he wanted to put the very best tattoo he could put on Robbie. Come on in here, fellas, and we'll show you where wow. the magic's made. Spacey took us to his Lucky Loser shop in Meridian. The guy's got a, like a 150-year-old building that he works on motorcycles in and has band practice in. He goes in there and he does what he loves to do. This bike right here actually was a digger-style bike. I built a trying to put a lot of work into it years ago, and it was going to be my daily rider, and finally got it done, and the bottom man fell out on it. Hey, guys, why don't you go with us tomorrow? What are you talking about? We're going to Pensacola and Gabe, Pulu Moon. Yeah. I know you know Gabe. Yeah, I know him. He's an old buddy of mine. And then we're going to cruise to Key Largo and then up to Daytona. Get chill bumps, man. I, I would really like to do that. That would be really awesome. We would love for you to do it, man. Yeah, I would like to do that. Can yeah. your bike make it? I, 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 I'll make it. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm going, man. All right, you got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You feel oh, that? Good. Be going bad, well, yeah. That's the important thing right there. I thought it would be awesome if we could have him go with us. He's just got heart and he's a lovable dude, man. You can't meet him and not see his genuineness. Let's go make some motorcycle history. All right. What's up, everybody? I'm here with Chris Beeler. He's my partner in White Cardinal Contracting. White Cardinal is a nationwide commercial framing company. We're licensed all over the United States. We definitely prefer the warmer climates. However, we'll travel east to west. When Dave said, hey man, do you want to go with us on this trip? I was like, yes. Here's this dude that writes for the horse magazine, which I've been reading since I was a teenager. I mean, now he's gonna ride with us. I also was secretly thinking that maybe I would just follow y'all, you know, like from afar or something. <laughs> Is that Spacey back there? Nah, man, he's still in Mississippi. Oh, I didn't know y'all was going this way. I was having to ride <laughs> this way myself. We're leaving Mississippi and we're heading to uh, Pensacola, Florida. We ride through a rainstorm and then not just your average rainstorm, it was a pretty good rainstorm. I think I supposedly earned my biker wings after that or something. This road here sucks. But all of a sudden we're gonna turn left and we're on the interstate. I knew I was gonna have to part ways with the guys. I was actually going to help out with my insurance company. I get to get off a motorcycle, get in a rent a car, make some money for a couple days, and meet back up with these guys two days later and it was a no-brainer. I think we'll be able to go a lot faster. Stuff won't end up missing. Everything's gonna go fine without him. When I moved to Meridian, one of the first people I met was Gabe. People know him today as Famous Gabe. We were both punk rock kids. We both rode freestyle bikes. We pretty much grew up together, you know? I'd read his bio. I follow him on social media. He's got a very unique style, very colorful, very imaginative. What's yeah. up? How are you, man? Good. Nice to finally meet you. Safe travels. I'm Spacey. Nice to meet you. Good to see you again. Uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, well, let me give you the grand tour. All right. Gallery room, you know. We have impromptu art shows, and I actually paint a lot, so I run out of space in my house, and they, there's paintings everywhere. It is a hoarder's comic book stream. I believe he had a life-size charge our banks in the corner, which I don't even know what something like that would cost. People need to get out there and start playing with some toys. They're fun. What are they made for? Action figures are cool, motorcycles are cool, and that's just how it works. Star Wars fan? Well, we uh, had the May the 4th be with you day right and we did 70 star wars themed tattoos that day wow how many artists we actually incorporated several artists from other shops we have a good 
rapport with the other shops around here. And this is a co-op. We're not really a for-profit shop. It's been a long, strange trip, as cliche as it is. It took 15 years to get to where I am today. That is one reason I wanted to stop here and pick your brain about that. That's incredible. I chose to get tattooed on by famous Gabe, and I gave him creative rights to do whatever he wanted. Awesome. It's cool. Well, if you come into Halloween, you're gonna get something weird. I like his style. I like what he does. I think he's a great artist. So I gave him a canvas on my leg, told him he could have that area and do whatever he wanted. A seven-eyed octopus tentacle as a dagger, a hawk's head on top of an isopod hilt. And I said, what's an isopod? So why did you go on this journey? I ask myself that same question every day. <laughs> For multiple reasons, man. For real, one of them is that uh, it really upsets me that there's nothing on television that accurately describes my tattoo shop and what I do for a living. So I wanted to see, I wanted to go around, and I want to show the reality of this industry. And there is no set reality. I mean, the way that you do things here, and you were talking about running this like a co-op, that's the first time I've ever even heard of somebody doing that. At his shop, you get voted in by the other tattoo artists. They all set their own prices. They can tattoo for as little or as much as they want. And at the end of the month, they divide up the bills evenly across the board and pay the bills. It's a double-edged sword. You know, it's kind of coming out of the cusp of when there was an industry that more or less kind of regulated itself. You weren't necessarily friendly with a dude down the road, but at the same time, you both kind of knew it. You wanted to keep what you had, and you wanted to keep it pure. There was a sense of, of pureness to the industry that I think that is gone. Gabe is very into the art side, and the money is secondary. You know, the money is only necessary so he can continue to do the art. If you're a tattoo artist in the Pensacola area, that is the spot that I would want to tattoo at. I'm grateful that I've learned the hard way and came up the way I did with our shop apprentices, people. So rather than one person apprentice, they're apprenticed by the whole shop. Man, in six months' time, they have more knowledge than that. It took me six years to get, oh, you yeah. know? It's awesome to sure give it to people that deserve it, though, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's incredible, man. Just, you know, you give your knowledge to younger people that are bright-eyed, that makes it all worth it, really. You know, it's, as it's someone who teaches anybody anything, it just really makes you feel good. At least twice a week, somebody comes in and wants to learn how to tattoo. And I tell them, I said, well, hey, it's already serious. And they're always like, yeah, I'm so serious, I'm serious. I said, well, we'll see how serious you are. Trace me. Draw me, paint me, I don't give a shit. You can take the same Sailor Jerry Rose and trace it 50 times, 50, five, zero, and bring it back tomorrow. And then ask me. I'm not saying I'm gonna say yes, but that's how you can ask me another question. So they leave, they never come back. Hey, look out there, is there a motorcycle club? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the Combat Vets Motorcycle Club. They're gonna stop in and say, hey, All right. we love our Combat Vets. A couple of Gabe's customers stopped by. They're part of a motorcycle club that is made up of nothing but veterans. What's up? Big Dave, I want you to meet my friends. They had the full sleeves. Gabe's done extensive work on these guys. These guys are from the Combat Vets Motorcycle Club. These guys do a lot for the veteran community. We raised, what, uh, $17,000 last year for Vets Causes. Yeah. yeah. In the local area. Yeah, besides who would have been a great tattoo guy. Yeah. Gabe's a great contributor back to the, uh, to the community. He's, he's done a great job supporting us in Combat Vets. He has a big heart and supports us, and uh, we're all for a great cause. Yeah. 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 For him to introduce us to some other top-notch people and broaden that circle of good people was awesome. Where did your nickname Famous Gabe come from? Oh man, that question. I uh, met a guy named Bob Montaigne. A guy who came up to the city with me. Well, here's this drummer that I knew from Madison, Wisconsin. His name is Gabe too. He's walking down the street in New York City. He's like, hey Gabe, like, oh shit, small world, you know? And Bob just goes, everybody knows you, you're famous. Bob was writing for some magazines at the time and to differentiate me from the other Gabe, the tattooed, he called me Famous Gabe. What made you do it here in Pensacola? Well, that's because my van broke down here. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of how fate happens, you know? Right. 
and I was at a Waffle House one night. My brother is there. My brother's just covered with all the worst tattoos I've ever done. Uh, you know, you gotta learn on somebody, right? Because right. when we were kids, man, we just loved tattoos. So you know, we'd go down and we'd look in the back of the old Easy Rider man. So if they had the tattoo kits, my brother's like, dude, you should totally get one of them kits and then learn on me. And I'm like, that is the worst idea okay. that I think you could possibly say. But I, I ended up still learning on him. He was sitting there and he had all these tattoos that I had done. And this guy goes, hey, you know, where'd you get your tattoos? You know, the typical conversation. And uh, my brother's like, oh, well, my brother did them. And the guy goes, come here and talk to me. And I get to talking to him. And the next day, I ended up getting a job at this tattoo shop. And um, the rest was history. Famous Gabe, he puts the ink in. After several hours of tattooing, you could tell that Dave was seriously in some pain. Inside my leg, while Gabe was tattooing me, I would have rather been punched in the nose multiple times by Chuck Liddell. Why are you touching his head? I told him, I said, put your hand on my head, you can feel the vibration. Why is Robbie so jealous of me? <laughs> I've been tattooed quite a bit. He is ruthless. I have never been tortured for seven hours like I did with Gabe tattooing. Oh, you want to talk about the TV shows? I would love to talk about the tattoo yeah. TV shows. I would, please uh, do. As seen on TV, who gives you as seen in your portfolio and a reflection of your work, that's what I won't care about. I don't matter if you've been on TV or not. If when I started tattooing and you had came to me and said, oh, Gabe, one day people are going to watch shows about tattoo shops on TV, I would have told you you were stupid. That's never going to happen, not in my lifetime. You know, and here's the thing, because it's television and it's just entertainment, you see some of these people on the show and they're just absolutely terrible because they picked them based on how they looked on camera. Nothing more. Man, I can tell you right now who the best tattoo artist in the world is. This Horyoshi 3. And if somebody wanted to argue that fact, then you're a dip shit. Very few people will ever come close to that level of tattooing. Done tattoo. It's definitely an isopod. <laughs> that is one unique <laughs> tattoo for sure, man. Thank you so much, man. I yes. appreciate your bud. Now, three hours is what we were supposed to do, and it ended up taking about seven hours. He is very, very, very good at what he does, but he tattoos so deep and he saturates that skin. Like his technique is just brutal. He's one of them guys that has been around the industry and knows people and super inspiring, man. The dude's got a great story, a great life. But he's not out there beating his own drum or anything like that. He does it through his art. His art's what's led him. I'm very pleased with the tattoo, but oh, it sucked. I earned every bit of Famous Gabe ink that I've got. This is a tattoo that will be here when I'm 90 years old. Hey, this is Big Dave. If you want to stay in touch, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for all new content.